This is Radio Clonetli, Talk Radio. Today we're discussing homelessness in the county of Carmarthenshire. The County Council say that there are zero people homeless or living on the streets of Clonetli. There are those who are working with the homeless who dispute this. Welcome along to uh, Talk Radio on Radio Clonetli online. I've got Iwan with me, a reporter who's been out and about over the last year, 2017, speaking to and interviewing and taking photographs of homeless people on the streets of Llanetli. Iwan, the council figures, uh, zero homeless people in Llanetli. Is is that accurate? Well, no, it's not accurate. But um, the problem is you have people who are, you know, surface sleeping. And unfortunately, that, that does not come under the statistics. So you, you look around, the evidence is there, the photos are there, the videos are there, the stories are there. That uh, the statistics are obviously wrong. And we've been together at a clear in the town there in Oldcastle Road and we've seen ourselves 40, maybe sometimes 50 people coming in there to the soup kitchen. And a number of those, as you say, uh, are not uh, homeless as such, technically homeless, um, because they're sofa surfing and they're staying with friends or in bed sits and so on. Uh, Do do you think that system of assessment is fair? They go out once a year and they they look on the streets and look around maybe in November and say, oh, there we are, there's there's no homeless. Or do you think they should be working with people like Gary Glenister in a clear there who is providing for the wallet and uh, various other people who may be aware of these people homeless on the streets of Clinetley? Yeah, they should be. Um, I mean... Every Sunday, there's the soup kitchens there in the clay. Uh, on Christmas Day, I was at the Salvation Army where around 50, 60 people were there. On mm-hmm. Christmas Day, you know, a uh, majority of them, well, quite a few of them, were, of course, uh, surf asleep in. Uh, but, um, you know, may, maybe they need to participate, they need to come down on the Sunday to a clay just to see it and experience it and talk to these people. We interviewed a, a guy called uh, Aidan, a young man, 18, quite an intelligent young guy, clean cut, um, was homeless, you know, and uh, we, we'll listen to that interview later. But we also interviewed Chris, a, man, a boy, a man now who'd been homeless for most of his life, uh, been through the care system. And uh, only yesterday, somebody posted, I think it was uh, Gary Jones, posted a photo of Chris sitting outside Tesco. Sometimes he could be seen outside Asda. And as soon as we posted that photo on Facebook, um, a lot of people came on and said, I know Chris, I, you know, I, I've given him some food, I've given him a blanket and so on. There was a lot of goodwill out there, Ewan. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's the same thing that we heard um, when I was uh, at the Salvation Army speaking to uh, Major Denise Cooper. Mm. And one of the things she said was uh, the support is phenomenal. The people who are coming in donating money, mm. donating in £10, donating £20. For, for for the cause, you know, it's, it's great. So the, the people basically of Clenetley are very generous and compassionate when it comes to homeless people. Um, but, you know, you can give and give and give, but it doesn't solve the problem, does it? No, it doesn't, no. What, what do you think we need in the town then? Uh, I think we need mo- more support for places like Clare and the Salvation Army. We, people need to be more aware. P- people who don't know about these places, these soup kitchens, w- would believe the statistics. They would yeah, believe that, that there are no there, yeah. homeless in Carmarthenshire. Yeah. But you know, when you go and meet these people and hear their stories... You know, mm. and, 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 and the other thing we had over Christmas, obviously, was, again, it was with a clear there where um, the, the, a group of people, uh, Owen, Glenister, Gar- a rel- relative of Gary's again, they were putting together shoe boxes for um, people, male t- toiletries, um, you know, washing stuff, all sorts of things. And they were also putting together boxes for kids, families who were in need. And, you know, should we be... Um, should we be charitable or should we say yes we should give should we be um, looking to help these people or should we take the view as a lot of people on social media have been quite cruel as well saying you know it's their own fault it's their own bad luck Um, you know they should get up get a job get out is it as easy as that I mean, you're a, you're a university educated young man how easy it is to get a job in Clinetley for you no not easy at all no that's a Facebook message. Um, so let's listen to Aidan, I think. I mean, uh, it's, it's straight out of the horse's mouth, as they say. So just state your name for me. Aidan Simpson. How old are you? Uh, 18. And Aidan, are you technically homeless? Uh, yes, I'm currently having to sofa surf at friends' home houses and that. Do you, 
without going into too much detail, if you don't want to, how did you become homeless? Um, I was originally in the care system, and right. I left that early, um, and I went into supportive lodgings yep. in the foyer down the road, yeah. and lots of arguments with other residents sort of forced me out, Yeah. and trying to look for housing after leaving the supportive lodgings, um, I've been categorised as not a priority for housing. Right. So why, why did they say you're not a priority? Um, I'm not 100% sure. It's just what the uh, housing options banned Be- Or because as. you left your yeah. accommodation that you did have, yeah. and therefore you voluntarily, you've made yourself t- yeah. homeless according to them. That's the law, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's what they're That's saying, what the, the criteria not, is. No. If I could have stayed there, yeah. I would have. It was just getting too much for you then yeah. to, to, to stay there. Financially as well, it was difficult. Right. What are you trying to do now then? Um, I'm currently looking for housing yeah. uh, in the Clackley and surrounding areas. Yeah. But um, I tend to find that other people tend to, who are higher up in the priority list, they t- tend to get it over me. Mm. If not, you know what I mean? When you were in the care system, was ev- everything all right? Yeah, it was good. Um, I had a stable foster home, stable environment. Yeah. Um, everything has provided for, like, food, clothing. So when you at a certain age, that just gets cut um, off? That gets cut off officially at mm. the age of 18. Right. Um, but I actually left um, on July the 5th, and I just turned eight, 18 on October the 3rd. Mm. So a couple of months prior to my 18th, that's when I actually moved out. So your situation at the moment is sofa surfing. Sofa surfing. Um, any hope? Any chances of maybe, you know, finding some work and accommodation and getting yourself back on track? Um, my main priority at the moment is trying to find accommodation. Yeah. So that I can then focus on looking for work once I've secured somewhere uh, yeah. to have a roof over my head, if you like. Yeah. Would you describe your position then as crisis, an emergency? Yes, because um, I used to be paid by the local authority yeah. in Merva to live in a supportive housing, but at the age of 18, that financial support stops. Mm. So I'm now having to wait for my benefits to kick in. Yeah. And I'm still unsure when that will be. There we are. That was Aidan Simpson talking to us. Uh, we'll carry on with that interview in the second part of the programme. Ewan, an 18-year-old, not, not much younger than you. Uh, do you have any empathy? Do you have any sympathy for Aidan's story there? Yeah, well, definitely. Well, you know, obviously more needs to be done. You know, there's only so much that, People can do yes. They can donate. People are donating, mm. which is great. But uh, you know, the people who can stop this happening, prevent it happening from above, they they just need to. One of the issues seems to be that they're grouping all these people together. They're putting them in a in a, in a hostel somewhere or whatever. And, and, and you know, we, we've got a lot of issues there with drugs and alcohol. And somebody like Aiden, who's not taking drugs, not on alcohol, he finds himself all of a sudden in this environment. Um, there's temptation there, but it's not a very nice place to be. And then if he doesn't like that and he leaves. As he said, he's made himself voluntarily homeless and therefore slides straight back down the ladder. So this is a vulnerable young man um, who is almost, you know, by 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 default, being forced to to be accommodated in a place that he really doesn't want to be in. Should we be looking? Should we, as a county, be looking to setting up a network for accommodation, good quality accommodation, um, for young people that are? at that level, maybe slipping through the net, coming out of care? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you, you do want them, once you can see them slip in, you, you know, you, you want to grab them as soon as possible. Mm. Uh, you, you hear stories of buildings around Clack here, and derelict buildings and that they're knocking down, you know. But there's plenty of areas around Clack here, particularly the town centre, where they could go. Mm. OK, we'll uh, come back again after this advert. You're listening to Talk Radio, Radio Tlanetli Online, brought to you by Finch Accountancy in Kidwaley. 
Welcome back. And uh, our issue today is homelessness, where we have Iwan Lewis in the studio, one of our reporters who's been working uh, at interviewing and documenting some of the homeless people in Llanelli. And we've been la- listening to Aidan Simpson, a young man who uh, has found himself on the streets of Llanelli. Let's take another listen at what Aidan has to say. I'm still unsure when that will be. So, because there's a delay there, you, yeah. you basically aren't getting any finance then? No, no financial support. No. Right. So the, the place you're staying, the people you're staying with, I guess they're just doing that out of charity then, are they? Uh, yes. Coming to somewhere like the soup kitchen here and meeting people, are, are there people here who've advised you, given you a bit of help? and Do, yeah. do, do, you, see, do you see a benefit in coming here? Yeah. Because it's actually quite an eye-opener, seeing people that I do know mm. from outside of being homeless yeah. are actually in a similar sort of situation. Yeah. The, the, the council's statistics, we asked them how many people were homeless in Tlaethi. They told us there was zero. What's your response to that? That's rubbish, to be honest. That's a rubbish, them saying that. Mm. Like walking along early evening you'll see lots of people in shop doorways yeah and uh, like um, porches of shops and things like that um do you mind me asking how you got into care was that a family thing or uh, yeah family uh, so so you 18 wouldn't 18 months old I was put into care ah right so you don't know who you are um don't know the original my family were no okay and What's the future hold for you, Hayden? Uh, is, is, it, is it pretty bleak? Are you, are you trying? Are you going to get somewhere, do you think? Hopefully that I get somewhere um, with accommodation first. So mm. that once I've sorted one thing out, which is accommodation, I can then prioritise all my other spare time to mm. looking for work. Are you worried about when you see the people here, when you hear the stories about their addictions alcohol, drugs. Are you worried that that's something that you might get into? Um, No, I don't see that I should fall into addiction or alcohol misuse or anything like that. Mm. And if you were to give a message to the the council, the, the, the services that are saying you're not a you're not a priority, what would that be? actually open your eyes and see what's actually going on (laughs) in your county and see how many people who are actually homeless Mm. either sleeping rough or sofa surfing actually open your eyes to that and provide support to these people there we are you and that was uh, Aidan Simpson his message there at the end was open your eyes Uh, your eyes have they been opened internetly yeah definitely I mean um I've been to a clear a few times now, particularly on a Sunday, and uh, it's just shocking. You can hear the stories, and it, you know it's fascinating. But for this to be happening in Britain mm. in 2017, going on 2018, is just ridiculous. There we go. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed our um, special, really, on homelessness internationally. We'd love to hear your views, and uh, we, we'll pick up on that in the next programme. We we are going to interview Chris as well. We've got an interview we've done with him. Uh, we, we'd love to hear your messages, your views. Maybe you've got a solution. Maybe you, you think that, um, you know, as some people are saying, they should all uh, be put in one place, and, and it's their fault. Or maybe you think, you know, there there's... Something that needs to be set up internally, a charitable organisation, um, although there, you know, there are some that exist, there are some that are doing sterling work, we're not saying that they aren't. So there we go. If you want to uh, get in touch with us, Facebook, uh, Radio Tlanetli, uh Twitter, Radio Tlanetli, and uh, our news uh, item section and website is Tlanetli Online. We also have Radio com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll catch you again next time. <laughs>